So I want to discuss uh, another one of Gianni Vadimo's essays, and it can be found in this book, uh, Nihilism and Emancipation, which was published in, uh, originally in Italian in 2003 and translated in 2004. And what I'd like to do is go over the opening essay in this, which is called Postmodernity Technology Ontology, and uh, because I think it's an interesting essay that uh, provides kind of a, an exegesis of some of Heidegger's ideas and an extension of them into postmodernity that I think is rather fascinating. I also think it's problematic, but uh, I do think it's fascinating and I think it's worth looking at. Um, so what I want to do is discuss it, and what happens is that the essay begins with what he calls um, uh, an examination of sociological impressionism, which is to say that through the late 19th century and on into the 20th century, philosophy began more and more to be identified with sociology. It became sociologized. We can already see this in Max Weber, and it becomes uh, more and more evident in Adorno and Horkheimer and uh, in Ernst Bloch and Walter Benjamin and uh, the philosophers of the Frankfurt School. We begin to see that sociology became, uh, rises and becomes of more and more interest to philosophers, largely as a response to the totalitarianism of science, to the hijacking of the social order by science with a kind of gigantic uh, totalizing umbrella that it lays over reality and subjects the individual to this absolutist system, uh, what Heidegger calls Gestel, uh, the ordering and framing of reality in terms of quantities, quantitative forces, and the storing up of energy so that it can be available on demand for use at a later time, and this pure quantization of reality a lot of that uh, is, is the basis for uh, this sort of hijacking of the humanities by science and this totalitarianism of, of the sciences led to the Frankfurt School and basically the foundation of critical theory, which is a kind of sociological philosophy. And critical theory really emerged as an attempt to dismantle authoritarian thought systems uh, of the type that gave rise to Stalinism and the Nazis and so forth. It's a kind of set of tools that Horkheimer and Adorno and Benjamin created to equip the modern individual with to dismantle authoritarian uh, thought systems uh, by showing how they are relative. And um, so that's what he starts off with, talking about uh, the, socio the sociologization of philosophy. And he says Heidegger is part of this too. Uh, and, but what Heidegger does, he says, with his idea of the understanding of being is more interesting and fascinating and complex than what we find in uh, the critical uh, theory of the Frankfurt School. And so far as for Heidegger, especially the Heidegger of the later period after the turn uh, in the 1930s in which he began to realize that being is something that is uh, culturally relative. That the idea of being, being first, let's remind ourselves, for Heidegger being is a kind of what uh, Vadimo calls an aperture. It opens up a kind of window into a culture uh, in, within which there are these sort of, as it were, Kantian a priori uh, presuppositions uh, that are relative to specific world ages and specific cultures through which and by means of which the historically situated individual uh, makes reality intelligible. So that anything within that window, within that interpret, uh, that aperture, as Vadimov calls it, uh, becomes intelligible as such and takes on meaning uh, relative to a given epoch. So what Heidegger realized, or what the later Heidegger realized was that uh, being is epochal. It, the Greek understanding of being of phusis was different from the Platonic understanding uh, of phusis as being divorced from becoming. Uh, the medieval understanding of being is very different from the modern understanding of being as gestell, as in framing. And so um, he wants to invoke Heidegger and he wants to pick up um, Heidegger's idea in the essay, in the various essays where he talks about technology as gestell, as in framing, in which Heidegger had said that <clears throat> basically what we have with gestell, with this t the erection and building of this technological world order, is the completion of metaphysics. Metaphysics is the age to be identified uh, that begins with the Greeks, with Plato especially, and goes all the way down through Nietzsche, and that Heidegger becomes critical of, in which it is thought that there is an absolute order a realm of privileged truths and absolutes to which certain individuals, ideally philosophers, poets and mystics, whoever, have access, and when they have access to that realm, uh, they can then use it as the basis to legitimize actions, very often violent actions, uh, against others who are not regarded as, or who are regarded as being at odds with this ground of being. So that's the metaphysical age, and he says that science, too, 
pre is meta just as metaphysical in that it presupposes access to this objective reality, this objective world order uh, that it draws its uh, axioms from, and that it draws its legitimacy and order from, and dictates to the individual its worldview. And I think that um, mathematics is one of the bases, I think, for this legitimization of this so-called objective world order. And I think one of the things we could say about, uh, let's say, the philosophy of Alain Badiou, or uh, his pupil Quentin Melizieux, um, who wrote the book After Finitude, is that they make the mistake of saying that, of identifying mathematics with ontology, and they become guilty of the exact thing that Heidegger was criticizing science of, that is to say, legitimizing itself through pretending that it's access to the ultimate reality via mathematics and the creation of a mathematical phase space you know, that you get in Descartes with analytical geometry, an X and a Y axis uh, that, that takes objects and deworlds them and puts them into an abstract mathematical phase space to which the scientist has uh, a privileged access and that this phase space can be accessed by anyone and anyone who accesses it can then make objectively true statements so that anything that is made playing by the rules of this game become you know, objectively true, an objective reality. So I think that Badiou's big mistake, uh, and also uh, Quentin Malizieux, uh, is in identifying numbers, mathematics, with ontology, uh, and to say that he who can access these numbers therefore has some sort of privileged access to an ultimate reality that the rest of us can only guess at and salivate over, uh, wishing that we had access to. I think that's a big mistake that Badiou and Malizieux have made, and they've violated uh, the whole point that Heidegger was making in his critique of science, and which Vadimo, uh, in following up here, uh, picks up on. That's metaphysics. That's an age of metaphysics, and what Badiou, even though he, he tends to be identified with the postmodern group, and Melizieu with the postmodern philosophers practicing right now, is actually still practicing this kind of metaphysics, which Heidegger announced as something that's basically dead. And it chained and achieved its completion in uh, Gestell, in the, in, the, in the framing of the world, uh, the capturing of it by uh, the, uh, a rational scientific world order. And then so he says, but in that Gestell, in that, in, in that in framing lies the saving power itself. This is what Heidegger says in these essays on technology. There is a saving power which will lead to the overcoming of metaphysics. And he's obscure about that, and he doesn't really go much into it. So what Fatima wants to do in this essay is interpret what he thinks Heidegger meant by the overcoming of metaphysics. So what he goes on to say in the essay is that <clears throat> the type of thing, uh, the, the aspect of Gestell that Heidegger is picturing in his essay on the question concerning technology and other essays, there are a number of them, uh, the aspect of technology that he's talking about really has to do with a technology that's based on machines, a mechanical world order. Machines tend to diffuse, uh, if you think of, a, of an engine, in which the power moves from a center to the periphery, we have a center periphery model in machines. And what Heidegger was really talking about is really modernity, not post-modernity. And here we get into the idea of uh, differing modernities, which we normally think of as modernity versus post-modernity. But if we think of the writings of Zygmunt Bauman, uh, he has called these two modernities heavy modernity versus liquid modernity, in which heavy modernity is the age of, of a sort of certain gigantism in technological products, the building of the Golden Gate Bridge in the 1930s and the Hoover Dam and, and all of these gigantic forms of technology. Uh, and it went hand in hand with colonialism and the conquering of huge swaths of the earth uh, with these nation states and the colonialization process that went along with it. Whereas light modernity or liquid modernity is a modernity that's concerned, that comes in after World War II and that is concerned more with the small and with the luminous, uh, light is a good word for it, he uses light modernity versus liquid modernity as in interchangeable terms. The, the fascination with quantum phenomena, with genetics, with the small, with nanotechnology, so liquid modernity is different. And also in the workforce, uh, the Fordist model, uh, in which Henry Ford becomes the great model uh, of the entrepreneur industrialist in heavy modernity, in which he could guarantee by doubling the salaries of his workers that the worker would stay with him and have the same job for the entirety of his life in heavy modernity, whereas in liquid modernity now, that's no longer the case. We have the Bill Gates uh, type of entrepreneur now, in which skills are constantly being rendered obsolete as the result of the rapid metabolism of new electronic technologies that are constantly 
uh, creating new jobs and at the same time dissolving old ones so that the individual cannot be said to have the same job all of his life anymore because he has to constantly learn new skills and as Bauman says the average person will change jobs at least 11 times in his lifetime at least um, so that's liquid modernity that's the light modernity Ul Ulrich Beck the German sociologist simply refers to them as first modernity and, and second modernity so Vadimo is talking here then about the two different modernities and he says that Heidegger's essay on the Gestell is modeled on uh, the previous modernity uh, in which the, the model is machines and Heidegger didn't really know or think much about the change in the nature of technology from mechanical technology to electronics, uh, electronics technologies which then come in after World War II, they, they actually come out of World War II and electronic technologies, Vadimo says, are what provide us with the key to Heidegger's idea of the possibility of uh, an erigness. Erigness means um, event, the event of being. Uh, being is realized through events, according to Vadimo. That's his reading of Heidegger. It's realized through events, and it, it's this idea of erigness that in the modern age that um, there will be an event that will give us the key to an overcoming of metaphysics. Um, and electronic technologies, he says, is part of the key to this. In that, what electronic technologies does is it renders, uh, because of its speed, uh, it renders everything uh, simultaneously co-present, and it makes visible all these different subcultures. All these different societies on the earth and these different subcultures become suddenly visible, co-present in the electronic world space. And along with that making visible of all these different cultures, we have an age of what Benimo calls a, a sort of conflict of interpretations. So we get all these differing interpretations of reality. And as a result of this, reality begins to disappear. It weakens. Reality was the originally the basis of, you know, the real world is the ultimate realm of the absolutes that become the foundation of traditional metaphysics. That begins to weaken with the rise of this realm of ghosts and phantoms and electronic simulacra, which virtualize the world. Reality disappears and it weakens, and in its place comes this very slippery world of multiple realities, multiple interpretations, multiple grounds of being. And so the forgetting of being, Heidegger had said that the history of metaphysics is mostly concerned with the forgetting of being, but this overcoming of metaphysics will simultaneously be a remembering of being, which Vadimo says here in this essay, the remembering of being then, properly now, should be understood as being as multiple. Being is something uh, that no one culture or society or group or the church or what have you, science, can pretend to have a monopoly on. It differs according to your different interpretation system. Vadimo was a pupil of Gadamer, and he's coming out of the, the tradition of hermeneutics, of multiple interpretations. So that... Um, this event then, this shift from mechanical technologies to electronic technologies, the making co-present of all of these different understandings of reality with all of these different cultures then leads to the unforgetting, the remembering of being, and to a weak ontology, to what Vadimo calls a weak ontology, which is an ontology in which being now is understood as weak. It's a weakened being, and nobody can pretend to have access to a single understanding of being uh, and try to use violence to impose it upon the rest of us. And so this should lead us, these electronic technologies, uh, which also happen in the age of decolonialization, should lead us uh, and be much more consistent with a democratic world order of tolerance and liberal ideologies and uh, a democratic age, uh, and rather than as the old metaphysical order supported an age of totalitarianisms and authoritarian regimes. So that's uh, what he believes how the nature of technology in the second modernity in its change has made visible Heidegger's prediction that through Gestell there would be an overcoming of metaphysics. That's the overcoming which Vadimo says. Now a quick critique of that is I, I think that one of the things that Vadimo leaves out of account here is that when you have an age of multiple interpretations and multiple conflicts of interpretations, it tends to lead to paranoia. And paranoia is a response to information overload, as any pupil of McLuhan knows. And paranoia leads to the individual to glom on to bizarre thought systems that tend to try to make sense out of the information overload by crushing it into a single model, whether it's Dianetics or some bizarre New Age philosophy. Whatever the bizarre model is, it, it tends to create this ontology of paranoia. So it's not really a good mental environment. And I think he overlooks that. It also produces an age of fundamentalisms. People fall back on fundamentalist 
world orders in response to this information overload to try to crush everything. That's the, the gist of Batamo's essay.